All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I have some great news for the Washington Commander fan base, the Burgundy and Gold Nation. At least in my eyes, this is great news. It has been reported from multiple sources, said in many different ways, especially what we're going to start off talking about today. Today's quote from Ron Rivera, that basically they are going to be very aggressive for a quarterback, and today's quote centers around Ron Rivera saying that he's willing to pull a Matthew Stafford-like trade for a veteran quarterback if he has to but i'm also going to dive into previous quotes that really show how aggressive ron rivera marty herney martin mayhew and all of those guys may be at trying to find a franchise quarterback for this team this offseason like immediately now free agency trade if that doesn't work draft but this video is more so concerned with looking for a veteran. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, be on the lookout for so much more content. Anything that goes down with the Washington Commander team, I got y'all. I'm going to give you all of the information and opinions going on. Of course, anything with franchise quarterback, anything draft related, anything for agency, team building, all of that. I'm coming with mock drafts, more live streams. Make sure y'all stay tuned for all of the content man and without further ado let's get it So basically, the Commanders are not content going into the 2022 season without exploring every opportunity to get a franchise quarterback. They clearly don't view Taylor Heineke as a franchise quarterback as their ideal week one starter for the 2022 season. I mean, even just how they revealed the new name, logo, jerseys, and all of that, and Taylor Heineke was not a part of any of it. That lets you know that they don't view him as their franchise guy. Otherwise, he would have been one of the three. If we already had our franchise guy, he would have definitely been been one of the three Rand Rogers Russell Wilson whoever he definitely would have been one of those three they would have probably gotten rid of maybe Chase Young maybe Jonathan Allen I'm pretty sure they would have kept Terry McLaurin though but I mean that's a whole nother minute detail that we're not talking about today the main point is is that they don't view Taylor Heineke as their franchise quarterback and they're going to be aggressive about acquiring one this offseason in an interview with PFT live today as in Friday head coach Ron Rivera said that Washington is going to go through the process of evaluating the options for free agents agency the draft or a trade and when it comes to that last option the trade option Rivera did point out the fact that QB availability has become a major factor when it appears things have run their course for a player and a team and I think that's pretty much alluding to the Russell Wilson situation when a player seems to be disgruntled when he seems like he made one out that presents an opportunity for us to trade for that guy. So I'm pretty sure Ron Rivera had Russell Wilson in his mind when he said that quote. But that can apply to other quarterbacks as well. But continuing on from that situation, he said, quote, I think what Detroit did with Stafford was masterful. Why? Because of the picks they're going to have. They're building for the future. They went out and they got a new head coach a year ago and said, hey, let's see what we can build into. So they let Matthew go and gave him an opportunity now look where he is unquote and to me that just basically sounds like ron rivera trying to convince the seahawks as to why they should trade russell wilson to us because he was talking more so from the point of view of the team that's getting rid of the better quarterback who's trading away the veteran quarterback for the matthew stafford situation he's talking on behalf of the lions trading matthew stafford to the rams and in our situation that would be the seahawks trading russell wilson to the washington commanders and he's basically saying like look how the lions are building for the future Seahawks y'all basically need to be doing the same thing give the quarterback that you have cherished for a long time a chance to go win a Super Bowl somewhere he can't win it with you Lions Seahawks so it's time for y'all to build for the future think about your future time to acquire some picks maybe some players and look towards rebuilding throughout like the next three plus years rather than still trying to force it with this veteran quarterback that wants out I mean those situations are so parallel and again I just think it's so funny that Ron Rivera is talking in the point of view of how this would help the Seahawks by talking about the Lions side of the Lions and Rams trade. I mean, at the end, he also talks about how you give the veteran quarterback a chance to go to a team that gives them a better opportunity of winning a Super Bowl, especially a sooner opportunity. And that's us. I guess he views us as the Rams right now. You get your franchise quarterback, you get your veteran franchise quarterback specifically, and now you're Super Bowl contenders. And you're probably in the Super Bowl that same year that you make that trade, just like the Rams. So I just 
thought that quote was very interesting just for the fact that he talked about both sides, but he really, really dove into why the Seahawks should trade Russell Wilson to us more so than why we need to go get Russell Wilson. I just think that's really funny. He also said, quote, Matthew, a veteran guy has gotten his opportunity and shown people what he's capable of. Let's see what happens the rest of the way. Would we love to have something like that? Yeah. If the right situation is available, we want to get in on it unquote and i like that quote because that just shows that he's aware that we could literally be a veteran franchise quarterback away from being at the very least playoff contenders nfc east favorites even and maybe even super bowl contenders like the rams were this year i mean they're in the super bowl right now they're quite literally super bowl contenders they're contending for a super bowl this weekend and then as far as veteran quarterbacks that you could possibly trade for we're talking about trade specifically i hope he's talking more so like a russell wilson or a deshaun watson or maybe finding a way to get aaron Rodgers through free agency but maybe if he's talking about a quarterback closer to matthew stafford maybe he's talking about Derek carr because i mean even as a georgia bulldog i love matthew stafford and he's an easy upgrade over anything we've had here since he's been in the league obviously but he's not pat Mahomes. he's not joe burrow he's not deshaun watson he's not aaron Rodgers. and if russell wilson gets back to his before the thumb injury version of himself matthew stafford's not him either so if we're talking about closer to a matthew stafford range you could possibly be thinking about Derek carr maybe we make a trade for Derek carr because Derek carr still has one more year in his contract with the raiders and maybe the raiders are ready to move on with a new quarterback maybe draft a guy now that they have a new entire situation head coach gm all of that so they may possibly be going in a completely different direction from Derek carr so maybe ron rivera's talking about the Raiders and Derek Carr rather than Seattle and Russell Wilson it's time for y'all to rebuild new head coach go get your quarterback take these picks take this draft capital maybe some players and give us your franchise quarterback so him and the Washington Commanders can go fight for a Super Bowl and then the Raiders can do what they can to build for the future so we'll see you also have Jimmy G which I feel like is like worst case scenario first of all because he's Jimmy G but then even on top of that he only has one year left in his contract but he's almost a 27 million dollar cap hit he's not worth that at all so i hope we're not talking about that as far as like the matthew stafford range obviously matthew stafford is way better than jimmy g in my opinion but again matthew stafford is not in the pat mahomes joe burrow josh allen category so if we're talking about outside of the elite we're also talking about jimmy g as well and i really hope rivera is not talking about jimmy g then you also have Jameis winston as a free agency option and i'm cool with Jameis winston if we go Jameis winston i would love to draft malik willis you sign Jameis winston for very cheap and let malik willis learn behind him for like a year or two i think that's almost most a best case scenario outside of getting like a deshaun watson or like a russell wilson i think that's easily the best case scenario after those options i like Jameis as far as a starting quarterback today more than i like like a marcus mariota or a mitchell trubisky and all of those guys especially now that Jameis winston has limited his turnovers he has a big arm so the offense that you design around malik willis you can go ahead and start implementing some of those plays and personnel groupings with Jameis. you know start attacking deep down the field with Jameis, and then when malik willis this is ready he can do the same thing so i like that situation and i mean there's just so many options out there i just wanted to talk about those three quarterbacks again because if we're not talking russell wilson if we're not talking deshaun watson if we're not talking aaron Rodgers, we're talking about quarterbacks outside of the elite tier and matthew stafford's really good but he's not elite and that's why matthew stafford Derek carr and all of these guys Jameis winston jimmy g are definitely out of the elite tier so who knows what range are we talking how aggressive are we truly going to be speaking of aggressive john com has reported that the roster is better suited this year than last year to aggressively acquire a new signal caller i mean first of all roster wise this team went out and proved this past season that when healthy they have a top five offensive line when healthy they have two dual threat tight ends two potential top 15 tight ends in my opinion i think john Bates is going to be really good jd mckissick is a very lethal weapon out of the backfield antonio gibson ran for a thousand yards i mean a quarterback can come into the situation and be in heaven in my opinion well i mean defense is another story we'll have to figure that out if they can bounce back and become their 2020 selves rather than their 2021 selves even though we showed spurts of greatness on that four game win streak this past season but the defense again is another story but offense wise if you're like a russell wilson 
Wilson, if you're any of these other quarterbacks, you do have to look at our team and be like, man, that would be great to play for them. I mean, they have Terry McLaurin. Even for like Aaron Rodgers, Terry McLaurin isn't Devontae Adams, but Terry McLaurin is definitely a top 10 receiver and not every team is just walking around with top 10 receivers without a quarterback situation ready to throw passes to him. A lot of the top 10 receivers already have franchise quarterbacks throwing to them, so they're good. And like somebody like Aaron Rodgers going from Devontae Adams to Terry McLaurin of course isn't a completely horizontal move but you can do way worse out there and to me for russell wilson i like terry more and i like dk and again our offensive line is way better than anything he's ever had in his history of playing in the nfl for seattle i feel like our tight end group is better than what russell wilson's ever had so it's just like our team is literally constructed in a way that you can plop in a franchise quarterback we should be 10 wins at minimum and easily competing with the cowboys to win a division but then on top of that even looking beyond just the roster we have and how much you can debate whether or not we're ready to win right now we also have better draft capital and we have more cap space compared to last offseason we had the 19th pick last season we have the 11th pick this draft season so we literally are better suited this year to be really aggressive for a franchise quarterback and then if you remember last year they tried it's been reported that we offered a first and a third for matthew stafford but then the rams went out there and outbid us and martin mayhew even talked about it i'm saying recently that the team will be quote selectively aggressive unquote to describe the organization's plans and finding an upgrade at the quarterback position going back to how good the roster is Ron Rivera agrees. He said, quote, I look at things with rose colored glasses. I'm an optimist. As you look at things, you go, I feel pretty good about this, unquote. So he also agrees that the roster is really well suited to add a veteran franchise quarterback and you're ready to go. You're ready to go win games immediately. He also said, quote, our personnel is more than good enough. I believe in our team. I believe in what we can be, unquote. And even more reports and quotes. It was reported by Mike Florio that Washington is preparing to take a big swing at a veteran quarterback soon and who knows because remember we traded for alex smith before the super bowl when we traded for him so who knows maybe a trade happens very suddenly maybe tomorrow a trade happens maybe right after the super bowl a trade happens we'll see and one of the really crazy quotes that i saw was that russell wilson is the most likely candidate which is really interesting but also it's been reported that many believe that this is a quote not taking no for an answer unquote type of situation so it sounds like we're going after somebody if it's russell wilson we're pursuing them head first and not taking no for an answer that's pretty crazy and just to let you know washington preparing to take a big swing at quarterback this offseason was a quote from albert breer so you're getting it from multiple resources everywhere that we are definitely going after a franchise quarterback now that's not the guarantee that we will hit on one and we will end up getting one we may end up missing not having the draft capital or enough players to offer the Seahawks what they want for Russell Wilson to entice Aaron Rodgers to come here to get Derek Carr from the Raiders. You know, all of those situations could end up not coming through and then we end up having to draft the guy. So who knows? But at the very least, you do know they're going to try. They tried last year offering a first offering a first and a third for Matthew Stafford. Now we have better draft capital and more cap space. So they're going to probably offer even more for a guy like Russell Wilson and those other guys. So this is going to be really interesting because I think the order in which they're going to pursue guys is trade first because you can technically do that today, tonight if they wanted to. Free agency once March hits. And then if we miss on all of those, draft the guy in April. So be on the lookout for trades first, then free agency. And if none of those work out, then the draft. And y'all already know Malik Willis is my favorite option there, especially if you have a Jameis Winston on a cheap contract that can start right now while Malik Willis learns. I think that's perfect. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this entire situation. Do you agree? Do you feel like the Washington Commanders need to be as aggressive as possible at finding a franchise quarterback like I do? And what are your favorite options? Put them in numerical order. Rank them. What are your favorite options, including trade, free agency, and draft? For me, I'm Deshaun Watson. Clearly, best case scenario if everything figures itself out and he doesn't get exiled by the NFL and he's not suspended for an entire year. Second for me is Malik Willis with Jameis Winston, and then third is Russell Wilson. But if you have any other order, if you prefer Aaron Rodgers, and the only reason I'm not extremely high on the Aaron Rodgers situation, first of all, he's older than Russell Wilson. Remember, Russell Wilson's only 33. And then also, Aaron Rodgers said he pretty much wants to play where Devontae Adams goes, so that's gonna be hard to sign Devontae Adams to quarterback money and also Aaron Rodgers. So I just don't even consider that as a possibility, in my honest opinion. So that's why that's not 
not in my top three because I just don't even think it's realistic. But again, let me know in the comment section what's your exact order of priority for this offseason. Do you want to skip trade and free agency completely and just straight up get a guy in the draft like a Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis or any of those other guys that y'all like? Or is Russell Wilson your number one? Is Deshaun Watson your number one? Definitely let me know. And also let me know if you actually believe the Washington Commanders this time around. Because apparently they wanted Justin Fields but weren't willing to give up what it took to trade up to get him. Apparently they wanted Matthew Stafford but weren't willing to outbid the Rams final offer so do you think they're actually going to do what it takes for real this year to go get a guy or are they just going to be passive again and just let everything slip by them because they didn't want to add an extra pick or a player so definitely let me let, so definitely let me know that as well and of course man I appreciate all of the support man shouts out to everybody that pulls up to the live streams leaves a like and a special shouts out to everybody that donates to the live stream and I really appreciate y'all for real and shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my Pro Bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolled on the screen right now I really appreciate y'all as well and I'm gonna catch y'all later I'm out